Hi everyone, welcome back to the Beam Math series where this is more of a continuation of section 2 and I'll be delving deeper into the subject oriented nature of section 2. I've decided to actually make a bit more of a dedicated video for each of the subjects that's involved in section 2 to have a better approach and a bit more tailored tips for, for the subjects that are required for you to know for section 2. The reason why I was more so made this uh, decision was to make sure that I can have and offer small bite-sized chunks and have a bit more specific to each of the subjects rather than having a 40 or 30 minute long video and grabbing everything in together. So hopefully that you guys will be a bit more appreciative of that. In this video, I'll be looking a bit more into detail of the biology aspect of section two and delving into how you can actually best prepare for that. I'm Aiden, a medical student. And if you do like these type of videos where I share any of the tips and tricks I've learned over the years and especially in my GCSE A level or even when I'm at university, do you actually drop a like so I can continue channeling these type of videos. And if you haven't actually subscribed already, please do so while also clicking the bell icon so you are notified as soon as possible when I upload a new video or I change anything new. Otherwise, let's talk about biology. So section two of biology is mostly testing you on the human biology aspect of it. Well, you'll be asked questions regarding the human body and you'll be expected to know how, for example, which way the blood in the heart pumps, whether it's right atrium or the left um, atrium, what, what are veins, what are arteries, what are the differences, what's the difference between breathing and gas exchange, things like that. Of course, there will be other questions where they will be asking you about the carbon cycle and nitrogen cycle, where you're actually expected to have a bit more of a knowledge about each steps and how they work so you, because they, they might very well ask you a question on any of those steps so having a bit of a knowledge regarding that will be good otherwise they can always ask you a bit more of a cell biology related question where they can ask you to compare an animal cell com with a plant cell or even a microorganism such as bacteria or a virus and compare and tell us any differences that you can see with a eukaryotic or prokaryotic the good thing is that you aren't really expected to know much about plant biology, which is a sign of relief as apparently a lot of people who are planning to do medicine don't really like plant biology for some reason. And it's been like a ongoing thing over the past two years. So a lot of people would be quite pleased with that. The only aspect you will be expected to know would be the plant cell and being able to compare that with an animal cell or any of the other, other type of cell there is in question but otherwise generally speaking it will be mainly human biology now statistically it's shown that biology is seems to be the easiest of the subject as uh, students have been able to score the highest in that segment compared to others that's mainly because of a few couple of reasons one more so because of the fact that majority of the questions are fact recall questions so so that means that if you already have been practicing and you have the knowledge inside your head you just need to memorize it and efficiently be able to answer the question which may be a bit more straight which will be a bit more straightforward the, and the second reason is that in biology there aren't really any calculation based questions and it's part of the reason why students actually don't really score as high in the other subjects because they have questions that do require you to do some calculations along with it. Biology is the only one that doesn't really require any calculations so it's just basically recall and conceptual understanding of it which makes things a bit easier uh, and lighter in terms of for the students and for yourself when you're going to be practicing and going forward with the exam. Of course that still doesn't mean that you should completely um, forget about biology. If biology you find it to be the hardest one irrelevant of what the statistics have shown. Once you have done a practice paper, then for sure go for it and prioritize as much of biology as you need to, because that's just something that you need to actually focus most on since it was the weakest compared to the others. But otherwise, going forward with in terms of the strategies that you can utilize for biology. In my original section two video, where I talked a bit more about what kind of section, what format section two is, what type of questions you should be expecting from it and how long you'll have to answer these questions. There, I said that on average you'll be given one minute for each question. And because of the nature of biology questions, I would recommend you to actually do them in 30 seconds or less. 
that's mainly because of the reason that they are quite straightforward and again one of the easiest ones that you can actually find there are advantages to it because you're able to do as many questions as fast as possible in that given time frame but also you, it leaves out quite a good amount of time at the end once you have finished doing all of the questions to go back and review any of the questions and answers you have written down or otherwise also look back on the questions that you have skipped and guessed so you can have a better approach to them without worrying on any of the other questions. This maximizes the score you can get because it allows you to answer as many questions as possible within the time frame that you are eligible. As I mentioned, that doesn't necessarily mean that you should be rushing any of the questions. The more you rush on things, the more stress you will have and the least con and you'll actually find and you'll actually find yourself to be having less and less confident on the answers you're getting. That morality would actually be will actually have a negative impact on you because that just only increases the chances of you getting something wrong just because of you not feeling as confident over it, just be, um, over the fact that you're rushing things. In able to to be able to answer these questions in thirty seconds and less, the only way to do that is to practice and gain the stamina that you need. To answer these questions and there's no other best place to find them than the official website of cambridge assessments where they have a bank of all of these questions already prepared for you uh, dating back from 2003 so the number of questions are the relevancy of the questions isn't the issue because they are already approachable and i will again provide a link down below for that website where you can actually just click on it and have access to all of those past papers so you can actually have a look at it and start doing it as soon as possible. Of course, the more you do it, the more getting used to you, those questions you'll become and the better you'll feel and the more confident you'll feel come exam day once you start doing those type of questions. But if you're still unsure about it, you can always look at the specification, which again, the Cambridge assessments have provided for you, which uh, I will drop down the link for that as well in the description. That will give you a detailed look at the topics that are expected from you from, uh, from the exam since even though it is at GCSE level people did different GCSEs and different exam boards so to equalize everyone in an equal footing they have created their own specification which will cover a broad range of topics across the different exam boards have a look at that and see any of the topics that you would like to prioritize most on and focus on that when you're either doing the exam papers or just practice questions in general now if you realize that after doing a practice paper to see where you stand there are other subjects that you would like to actually look back on i have actually made it more dedicated videos on those subjects in the playlist for bema that i've created so have a look at that so you can have a bit more of a bespoke approach otherwise thank you very much for watching and i will see you in the next video